Finding a real estate investment deal in today's market is hard, but does it have to be? In this video, I'm going to walk you through step by step what challenges real estate investors face today, what creative financing is, and a deep dive into the seller financing strategy. So what challenges do investors face in today's market? One, there's not enough on-market deal flow. With limited inventory, there are not enough deals that cash flow today. A large part of this is due to high interest rates. Sellers do not want to sell their home since they are locked in at lower interest rates. Think 2 3% interest rates. And buyers are unable to afford homes because interest rates for them are high. Think 7 8%. This affects everyone's buying power and skews supply and demand. Third, increase competition. We live in the era of knowledge with information at our fingertips and data capabilities we never saw before due to advancements in technology. This has shifted the real estate game from a personal relationship business to a data-driven one, with mom and pop buyers competing against institutional buyers as well. Then we have high margins and fees. The complexity of a real estate transaction has so many people involved. Buyer, seller, agents, lenders, title, and even attorneys. There are a tremendous amount of fees that are cut into these profit margins. As investors scale their portfolio, it becomes more difficult to receive bank loans due to their high debt to income ratio. So how do we actually combat each of these issues? Well, first, we need to remove the intermediaries, remove agents with high fees, remove the MLS as the only platform to list or find parties to sell, and most importantly, remove the bank to remove high interest rate and red tape requirements that slow a deal down. The first two can optionally still remain to make a deal work, but the latter is the most important to be removed from the transaction. So both interested parties need to transact directly with one another via creative financing. So what is creative financing when it comes to real estate investing? Creative financing refers to non-traditional methods of funding a real estate transaction that typically involves alternatives to conventional bank loans. Methods of creative financing you've probably heard before include seller financing, lease options, subject to financing, private money loans, and hard money loans. Today, we are going to focus specifically on seller financing, and we will start with an easy example to follow. So we're going to walk through buying and selling a car to demonstrate seller financing. So in this example, there are two parties involved in the transaction, party A who wants to sell his car party B who wants to buy a car, and their common interest is the car. So how does this traditionally work? Traditionally, party A will sell his car to a dealership. Traditionally, party B will buy a car from a dealership. Both party A and party B are working with the dealership to make a transaction on a car. But we have a problem. Party A takes his car to the dealership and they only want to offer him 11 k for his car, but he feels like it's worth more. Party B goes to the dealership to purchase the car. They are a student that recently graduated and have a limited credit score. The dealership will sell the car they want for 12 k with a whopping 13% interest rate. Party A and Party B are both unhappy with the terms they were given. Here is what we know about each of them. Party A purchased the car on a five-year term at 2% interest. They purchased the car five years ago, and now the loan is fully paid off, so monthly they owe zero. The dealership said the car is worth 11 k but Party A thinks their car is worth more than that. Party B is a recent graduate with stable income but limited to no credit score. During college, the student worked part-time and saved 3 k from tips at a local restaurant. The dealership is offering a high interest rate on the loan for the car due to their limited credit score. Party B thinks they should have a lower interest rate. So how do we get both parties to get what they want? The resolution is for both parties to strike a deal. Party A sells the car to Party B. 
The terms are for $13,000 with 2% interest rate over five years with a 3K down payment. The benefits for Party A is that they earn an extra 2K on their original sales price plus interest. Party B pays more than retail, but at a lower interest rate. Why this works? For the seller, who is Party A, their loan is paid off, so they can do flexible terms. Party A avoids dealer fees and sells at a higher price than market value. Now, do take into consideration that based on inflation, this could be a good or bad deal, but for now, we'll just avoid that topic. Then for the buyer, Party B, they receive the car more quickly than waiting for their credit score to rise, which could take a year plus. They also are able to buy at a lower total price. So even though they're purchasing the car for 13K instead of 12K, they are doing it at 2% interest rate versus 13%. Over the long run, they're going to save a lot of money. So within this transaction, there are some things we did forget. So who did we forget? We forgot the bank. The dealer is not directly offering the loan. It is the lender that they work with that is offering, say, a loan on $12,000 to the buyer in this case. And what else did we forget? We forgot that there are contracts. The dealer signs a contract separately with both the buyer and the seller to purchase and then sell the vehicle. So now we have an understanding of what a flow of a seller financing deal could look like, why some of these middle parties are removed, and now let's explore how this actually impacts traditional real estate transaction. So traditional real estate transaction, there are three main components. There's the seller, the buyer, and the good they want to transact on, which is the home. The seller hires an agent to sell their home. They draft a contract, which usually binds the seller to the agent for a certain amount of time and includes a fee. The agent then lists the property on the MLS for other agents and buyers to find it. The buyer then hires an agent to help them find a home that meets their personal and financial needs. The agent will search on the MLS for these properties. It is critical the buyer is at least pre-approved by the bank to receive a loan for a home. Once the buyer finds a home, they have their agent create an offer letter. The seller's agent then relays the offer letter to the seller, which they can accept, reject, or negotiate. Once both parties come to an agreement, the offer letter and its terms are binding. They go through lending underwriting for the bank to approve the loan. The money is wired from the buyer's lender to a seller via a transfer. The buyer receives title to the property and money is exchanged for the keys. So that's a lot of steps for a single transaction. Now let's try to understand how this differs in seller financing. In seller financing, there are less parties involved. Typically, the transaction is done off market. For example, the seller is selling for sale by owner and they want to avoid the agent and MLS fees. The buyer transacts directly with the seller and creates an offer letter themselves. Both parties avoid the fees of brokers. The buyer also avoids receiving lending via a bank. And how is this all even possible? It's because the seller becomes the bank. They can do this because they own their property fully. Just like in the car example, party A owned their car and did not have any monthly payments. Therefore, they would be able to be flexible on the terms they created with the buyer. This is very similar when it comes to this housing example. So how does this actually benefit the seller and the buyer? Well, for the seller, they can have higher earnings. The sale price is typically meets their expectations or is higher than the on-market estimate. They also are avoiding broker commission and there's tax savings because they are deferring capital gains tax. For the buyer, they need less resources. So their down payment may not have to be 20% and instead may be as little as 0, 5, 10, or 15%. Then for interest rate, it's typically lower than market rate. So no longer paying 8%, they may be paying the seller, say 5% instead. Then when it comes to time, there's less requirements because they're not going through a lender. So for example, if the investor is on deal 9 or 10, they may find it difficult to get funding on a conventional loan. 
with seller financing, there's less scrutiny on debt to income ratio. So why doesn't everyone do seller financing? Well, there are some challenges here. It is difficult for both parties to find one another. There is not a button on the MLS that says, hey, I'm willing to do seller financing. Hey, I own my house fully. The use of real estate, especially for investing, is very different than a car. A car is simple. The use is to drive it. For a property, the use can be buy and hold, fix and flip, short-term rental, etc. The transaction is also larger, which requires more scrutiny and underwriting to make sure the deal would work. Because a transaction is higher, the stakes are higher as well. For most individuals, their greatest asset is their home. The seller takes a risk on their buyer defaulting on the loan. If this occurs, they have to deal with legal issues. For the buyer, writing an offer letter can seem intimidating, as well as negotiating on the terms to favor both sides of the transaction. Many sellers are not privy to creative financing. Therefore, the buyer needs to be well-educated enough to explain the benefits for both sides. How do you make your next deal a seller finance deal? Well, today we covered what is seller financing. Now, although there are challenges, the benefits far outweigh the cons for both parties. To get started in seller financing, there are more steps involved, like where to find seller financing deals, how to analyze these deals, how to make an offer on these deals, and how to close on this deal. Let me know below if the topic of seller financing and finding deals is of interest to you in the comments below. Depending on demand, I'll walk through each of these step-by-step, including automation tips. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss future trainings like this. Thanks.